guess we're doing questions and answers today. <laughs> <laughs> when I was about four years old. Well, I started at a dance school. The school was called Morgan Asanoff Dance School and it was based in Winchmore Hill and it was also in Palmer's Green. I really was not that good to start off with. I was so shy, I was so timid. It was my mum who found out from a friend that she was taking her daughter to a local dance school. So she was like to my mum, you know, you should come along, you should bring Miriam, she might like it. My teachers there were so strict, so, so strict. There is no denying that, but they were the ones who whipped me into shape. They were basically just giving us a taster of what the profession was like and I know that that's ridiculous to say when you're like teaching a four-year-old but I can see that they are just getting you ready for what could be and as a child and I still am now I'm such a smiler and I tell you that is really how I'm getting through life but the great thing about the school is as well it definitely is a place for a hobby it's a place for an outlet it's a place to enjoy yourself and have fun what was so beautiful about Morgan Asanoff is that it was just a family environment. It was so family orientated. It was like a boutique kind of school. I spent 18 years at this dance school and, you know, loved every minute of it. I mean, it was, there were tough times, you know, there definitely were tough times, but there's nothing that's worth it and worth reaching that is easy. So it didn't, it didn't phase me. <laughs> basically. Um, I did not know. When I was younger, really young, I wanted to be an author. I was inspired by Jacqueline Wilson. I used to read her books all the time. And then I kind of got into the idea of creating my own business. I loved the idea of working for yourself. But then at the same time, I was getting a lot better in my hobby side of things so with performing so I was really in two minds I actually ended up taking a gap year because I still didn't really know what I wanted to do and I spoke to my brother who was at Arts Ed at the time he spoke to me about how I should audition for Arts Ed kind of give myself the chance to see if this is what I want to do and so I did audition in the end and you know going to the school was incredible I loved everything about it the people there the grounds the teachers and I just completely fell in love I remember doing my last competition all England dance finals I was doing one of my solos I remember thinking to myself I cannot let this go how could I even think about going to uni to study business and economics when I'd just be toe tapping under the desk and my hands would be going and the body would just be shaking with excitement with no outlet so it was basically decided and I remember just being on that stage and thinking no um my heart is in performing. My brother actually started when he was about eight years old and he was just sensational. As soon as he rocked up, he was a star. He still is a star. And he inspired me so much. He just had so much charisma and style and panache. Just something that you just couldn't teach. It really was something extraordinary. And to know that that was my older brother and you know I, I'd watch him on stage all the time I was just so inspired and thought to myself you know I can be like that I can go on that stage and and I can do great things just like he does being his duet partner really taught me so much performing is just about having fun essentially doing what you know we've always done since we were very young we pretend we create these worlds and we live and we explore. When you get up on that stage, it's about telling a story. Now, whether that be through a tap dance or whether that be through a jazz dance, there is a story. It's not just, you know, pointless, aimless moves amalgamated together. There is substance and there is energy. That is what performing is. It's literally that. It's just a bunch of adults playing around. <laughs> auditioning for a drama school, I would say be yourself. 
you cannot be anybody else you are you and you are you because of the way you've been brought up what you've been surrounded by and what you're influenced by and that's not going to change in enough time to prep for an audition i think you just have to believe in yourself you will never know what a school what a drama school wants you know we can sit here and we can say you know they want somebody who can hit a top C, they want somebody whose leg goes behind their ear. But you know what? In the grand scheme of things, they want somebody who they think can work. Schools want to be able to know that you are a moldable person. You don't necessarily just want to be a block type of person and you only do one style of thing. You want to be able to do huge amounts of things, a plethora of things. Just have a bit of faith and believe that you are good enough because you are you absolutely are and you know you may audition and you may not get it the first time and that is okay and they're not looking for the finished article by any means so as long as you're there with excitement and grit and something about you then there's no way they can say no went to this theatre company called Talent Time and um, that's run by someone called Stuart Glover who is incredible, he's a great 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 man. He was putting on a show called Hairspray at the time. So I auditioned and I remember the audition song was Good Morning Baltimore. I knew I was never going to play Tracy for obvious reasons but it was a great great scene. After I auditioned I then was told that I got the part of Motor Mouth Made Bell on certain performances and on other performances I got the role of a dynamite. What was actually really funny was my brother actually auditioned as well for the same show and got the role of seaweed. So at 14 years old I was playing my 16 year old brother's mother. So that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like dancing. Now when you dance it's all about muscle memory and that is literally what singing is about. You keep doing exercise, you keep doing scales. When you sing it literally becomes second, second nature because when you sing you should never be thinking about technique. You just trust that all of that technique is in place. You have to remember that the same way that for somebody dancing is just like second nature you know and they can just bang out a consistent triple pirouette in their sleep. Whereas somebody else would have to spend countless hours just trying to nail that single. Singing is just like that. How I've got into singing is from just listening to the greats, Ella Fitzgerald, um, Billie Holiday, Eva Cassidy, you can just learn so much from it and pick what you want from that and create your own voice. What I really find, if I don't feel a song, it always sounds awful. When you feel something, it's just, it's like an extension of you, right? Like, you know, when you're, if you just hum sometimes, you know, you just let out a hum. You know, it's just like you just you feel good today, so you just give it a bit of a hum. You just say, mm -hmm. you know, you just you just feel it. You know. <laughs> process for On The Town was actually really, really fun. It started with an audition that was at my school, Arts Ed, at the time. I remember thinking, this dance is so hard. I mean, like, <laughs> so hard and so fast. About four of us got a recall um, from the year. We did the routine again at a different venue and Drew McConey was there this time, who is, who was the choreographer. And then we got further recalls and then we had to do like a part of deux, part of deux section and then I got sent Hildy material and Claire material so I said okay I'm gonna learn Hildy because I already knew the song I can cook to and loved it so I was like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna learn this and I think she's a cracking character then I got a recall and had to do a read through with the artistic director of the open air theatre Tim Sheeda he said you know the problem is Hildy is somebody who is very misunderstood she kind of uses her confidence to hide her kind of self-consciousness and self-doubt within herself. He was like, but what I'm looking at right now is this shit hot woman. And I 
died laughing because I thought, well, that's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> In my head, I was kind of like, right, well, then that's that. I guess I didn't get it. But then after, Tim said to me, can you read the sides for Claire Deleuze? But the thing with Claire was she had a lot of scientific, very long words in it, like Pithecanthropus erectus, which at the time I did not know. <laughs> so you can just imagine me sat there like, Pithecanthropus. Then after that, they said I was called in for a final call. This was probably one of the most memorable auditions for me because I packed my little handbag that I was gonna bring. I put my little tape measure in there. I made my own camera. It was just like this box, like a perfume box. And I had a little notepad and pen. I went in there, I started doing the scene and then I just whipped out the tape measure. The panel looked like they were really enjoying it too. And then I went over to the piano with Tom Deering, the MD. We did some of Carried Away. Carried Away goes to a top C at the end which if you don't know, is quite high. But I just kind of did it a few times with Tom around the piano and then just, it just flew out of me. Like I don't understand how it happened, but it just was sensational. Like I was just, I was surprised at myself. I kind of looked at Tom like, well, what, what was that then? And you know, am I gonna be able to do that again? <laughs> that taught me anything. It taught me to just have fun and lose yourself. And just never think that you're doing too much, you know, just have fun with it. And I just think you may as well put everything in it. Because at least if you don't get it, you can be like, well, you know what? I had a bleeding good time. <laughs> Surreal. It was like I was watching an award show on TV, but I was actually sat there at one of the tables. It was just crazy. <laughs> what is my life? But then it came to um, the best actress in the musical category. Sharon D. Clark went up to announce the winner. When my name was called, I think time actually stopped for a minute. It was a really beautiful moment. My mum was just so, so proud and she was all tearing up. But I felt really humbled and excited that my performance in On The Town was received so well. I mean, I had the most amazing time playing Claire, but to know that other people enjoyed my performance enough to give me an award for it really was, it was something really, really special. And I can honestly say that I'm so, so, so happy that the stage has put together something like the debut awards, because when new talent comes out, there really isn't anything like the debut awards. There's nothing that really recognizes brand new talent that comes out. So for them to actually be awarding new talent, they're making their first ever West End debuts, really is something special. And I hope that the stage debut awards can inspire people even further. You can have a shot at winning an award as soon as you come out of school. And that is such an incredible thing. That's so amazing. And I hope that I can inspire people as well because growing up, as I've said, I really, really was not a good performer. But honestly, hard work, determination, and having fun is what got me to where I am now. And I cannot thank everyone who's helped me get here enough. <laughs> I can inspire people to stick to what they love despite the hard times, the hardship and the moments when it can really feel like everything is against you. If I can make people pick themselves up again and strive and believe that they are good enough, then I will have definitely done something right. I want to inspire people the way that my brother inspires me, the way that my mum inspires me, the way that I'm inspired by the world. I mean, I'm inspired by so many people every single day. I think you should just be inspired by everything. And I believe in positivity. I'm just such a positive person. I I thrive on positivity. I, I, I love positive people. I love positive energy. But I don't let negativity or negative people bring me down. And the absolute fundamental rule is to believe in yourself. It doesn't matter if no one believes in you. As long as you do, there is no limit to your greatness. 
If you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel. If you want to follow some of my social media sites, you can follow me on Instagram at Marie underscore L. You can follow me on Twitter at Miriam Teakley. Uh, I have actually deleted Snapchat now uh, because I just don't use it anymore. So I thought clogging up space, got rid of it. Oh, my Facebook is also Miriam Teakley, so you can add me on that if you want. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and have learnt something. I hope you, even if it's just one thing that you can take away from this video, then I will feel very, very, very humbled and very, very happy. So thank you for watching and listening. Take care and be great.